Good morning, church. Pastor Tommy here with you this morning as we continue through the Radiant Word reading plan. Today we're talking about Genesis chapter 30. And in chapter 30, it has a lot to talk about jealousy, envy, rivalry. But in the end, it's God's fulfillment of his promise and prosperity for Jacob. But we're going to start in verse 1 where Jacob's wife, Rachel, comes up to him and she says, Give me children or I will die. And what does Jacob say? Am I God? Now, you may be thinking, that could have been a little bit more heartfelt or sympathetic. But really, what I love is this is Jacob showing that he is a man of God. And he's saying to Rachel, we need to trust God. It's in God's timing. Rachel doesn't listen to him, though. And she goes and she gets her servant and offers her servant to Jacob. And through this servant, Jacob has two sons. Now, this is sounding kind of familiar, right? If you remember, Jacob is the son of Isaac and the grandson of Abraham. And remember, Abraham and Sarah went through a similar trial and, and situation in their marriage. But through this process, Jacob has two sons through the servant that Rachel offered him. Now, Rachel has a sister named Leah, and Leah sees that Rachel's had two sons. And you would think, as any good sister, she's excited for her, she's happy for her. But no, she's actually sitting there saying, ah, oh, this isn't fair. And so she offers her servant to Jacob, who then gives Jacob another two sons. Now, one day, Leah's oldest son, Reuben, is coming back from the harvest, and he's got some mandrakes. And Rachel, who still has Jacob's heart, is sitting there going, oh, I really would love some mandrakes. And Leah, again, thinking that, you know, she would be nice and offer her sister some mandrakes, she allows that jealousy, that envy, that rivalry to just consume her heart. And so she says to Rachel, you stole my husband, but if I give you mandrakes, I get Jacob back. And of course, Rachel's like, sure. <laughs> so she offers Jacob over for the mandrakes. And so then Leah and Jacob have two more sons and a daughter. And out of this, Leah starts to believe and think, okay, well, Jacob's going to love me more because I've bore and given him all these children. But really, God remembered Rachel, just as he did with Sarah, with Abraham. He remembered Rachel, and he allowed Rachel to have a child, and they named that son Joseph. So really, again, just as Jacob had said to Rachel in the beginning, it's in God's timing. We have to wait on God. The promise was fulfilled. We then move into verse 25 through the rest of chapter 30 where you're going to see the encounter between Jacob and his father-in-law Laban, who he worked for many, many years. But essentially, Jacob goes to Laban and he says to him that he wants to leave because in Genesis chapter 28, God made a promise to Jacob that he would be prosperous and fruitful. So Jacob then goes to Laban and says that he wants to leave with his daughters and his grandchildren, and he's asking Laban for some sheep and goats. Now, Laban, obviously, these are this is his family, but what Laban's seeing is Jacob was very good at his job, and Jacob made him a very wealthy and prosperous man. And so he says to him, go ahead and do this, and he puts some uh, kind of an agreement in place. And so Jacob and Laban agree through this, and through Jacob's hard work, and this is where we really start to see where if we honor our employers and if we work hard for our employers, God will bless us back as well. Because what ends up happening is God's promise is fulfilled and Jacob has uh, just becomes very prosperous through the speckled and spotted goats and sheep. So through this, just continue guys to read through Genesis chapter 30. And as we get into 31, you're going to find out about a vision and a dream that uh, Jacob also got from God about those speckled and spotted goats. Love you guys and have a great day.